Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at question 4 from the PDPS workshop. So, in this question we are doing uh, some major refactoring and it's to do with creating functions. So if you are, I don't know, programming something and you have two chunks of code or multiple uh, sets of code that are looking very similar, that's often a sign that you can refactor it um, and just create a function because there's no need to write this code twice when you can just write it once and have two function calls um, that will save you a lot of time. So um, if you're in an exam setting and you get code, two lots of code that look the same, it's often um, a sign that you're needing to create a function. Um, and there's a really easy process to do that and to do it with doing what the question asks to have as few parameters as possible giving the parameters meaningful names, which we do anyway, um, and that will do the same as the seven lines. So if we have a look at what, I'll comment this out first, what the code does, this is what it looks like. So this is what we want to create in the end. Uh, we don't want to change that code, we just want to refactor it. And we're going to refactor it by creating this method here called draw ellipse in rect, which uh, is what the program's doing. Um, and then instead of this code being written twice, it will just be one function call. So I'm going to replace that there. So that's a function call for this. And this will be the function call for this. Um, and then what we want to do is analyze each line of the code, see what's similar and what's different. What's similar will just be put into the function and what's different will be used as a parameter. Um, so let's go line by line and work out what we need because if we do this process then we'll have um, the smaller amount of parameters that we need. There's no need having a parameter for each of these values because some of them are the same. So let's start with the first line of each. So first line of each we've got stroke weight 2 and stroke weight 4. So that's our first difference. We can see that for each um, section of code, it has a different stroke weight. So that is an input that we need for our function. Um, so that's an int, so int, and then we want a meaningful name. Um, stroke w, stroke weight, I guess, that's fine. Um, and for this one, this one will be inputting two, and this one will be inputting four. Okay, so now I can go stroke weight like that. Um, and that will work for both of these now. So we've done this line and we've done this line. Sometimes I find commenting it out or deleting it is good because I can just say it's done, don't have to worry about it. Um, and then we have a look at the next line, we analyze that one. So this one has a stroke color of red, 25500. Um, and this one is the same. So if we want as few parameters as possible, there's no point having this as a parameter because um, it's the same for both. So I can just put that here, no input is needed, and I'm finished with that line. Okay, next line. This one has um, this RGB code for our fill, and this one has a different RGB code here. So that will be an input that we need. So we need an R, a G, a B. Uh, some people have gotten around doing an R, a G and a B by um, creating a color variable, but we can just use RGB. Um, so the RGB for this one is those values there. So I'll just copy that straight in. The RGB values for this one are these ones here. So now that's an input and we can just go fill RGB and that will work for both codes. Great, so we're done with that one. Next line, rect mode center, rect mode center, so it's the same mode. So we can just put that straight into our function because it's the same. So that's done, that's done. Okay, so uh, this rectangle is positioned at 200, 150, and its width and height is 70. 
um, and this rectangle's x and y position is 350, 350 uh, with the width and height 70 again. So the width and height here are the same, but our x and y positions aren't. So that's going to be another input. So I'll go uh, rect x, rect y, and then we can put that code here. So we've got rect x, rect y, 70, 70. Cool. Um, and then we need to, this one needs 200 and 150 as its x and y. And this one needs 350, 350 as it's x and y. And we are done with that one. Next, we've got fill 255, so that's the same. Copy that straight in and we're done. Great. And now we've got, this one has ellipse 200, 150, and its width and height is 50, 50. This one here, the width and height is the same. Um, but its position is not. So uh, that will be like this, and then fifty fifty. And this one will need the inputs here, and this one will need the inputs here. Great, so we've finished with all of this, um, but we're not finished with this function because uh, we've used a lot of parameters here. What we want to do is have a look um, and see if any of the values are the same, and that way we can eliminate uh, some of those parameters. So I can see in this function called here, the number 350 is written four times, um, which seems pretty unnecessary. And on this function call here, the combination of 200, 150 is written twice. So um, when we have a look back at our code, we can see that the X and Y position of our rectangle in our ellipse um, is the same in both scenarios. So instead of having different X and Y variables for each shape, um, we can just create the one X and Y variable just to reduce the number of parameters we're using. So let's change it to X pos and Y pos. Let's remove those ones. Y pos, uh, and then we can remove some of these. So that eliminates two there, which looks good. And great, I don't think I can see other than this scenario, but that's just a coincidence that the X and Y are the same. And so we're finished here, so we can remove that code. Um, and making these decisions is tricky, like making the decision to have um, the X and Y position of the rectangles and the, the ellipse the same. Um, it's sometimes something that people don't pick up because they're thinking, okay, but what if I want to do this function again and for some reason um, I want my ellipse to be somewhere else? Like we don't know how this code is going to be used again. Um, so in that situation, what you want to do, especially in your exam, um, in real life it's probably a bit different, but in the exam you just want to pretend that this function is only being called twice um, and only worry about what's similar and different in these two instances. Even though, you know, someone might decide, well, I don't want the stroke to be red, I want it to be green. Um, just assume that that's not going to happen uh, because then you can have as few parameters as possible. Same with um, this situation here. Someone might say, well, but what if later on I want to change the size of my rectangle, my ellipse? Maybe that's a variable I need. Just assume in the context of this exam that that's not going to happen. And that's the trick there. Um, yeah, so if you have a look here, if you're comparing, maybe I'll copy this over into a new, not a new tab, a new ellipse window here. When you're comparing these two 
bits of code. This one is more, I mean, there's more information. We know that we're drawing an ellipse and a rectangle um, with these variables as the positions. So not only have we condensed the amount of code we're written, we've written um, by removing uh, repetitive code, um, but it, we're actually more informed on what's happening because we have a function that tells us we have uh, variables that have meaningful names. Um, so I'm just going to double check that we've done this correctly. Oops, probably should move that over. So this is the code from this one. And this is the code from the left one. So they are the same, which means that we've refactored it correctly. If you get something different, then maybe you've refactored something incorrectly. Um, but if you follow this process of going line by line, comparing um, the similarities and differences, uh, you should pick up um, or you should have code that works the same way, just more refactored. Um, yeah, so that's what you want to do for question four.